Now let's turn to a new near disaster involving the Alaska Air Jet that basically had a door blowout during the flight. It was not exactly a door, but something called a plug that's built into the plane when customers like Alaska decide they do not want an emergency exit there. So instead of a door, they plug the space where the door would have gone with, well, sort of a fake door, I guess. It weighs 63 pounds, though, so it's not light and real sturdy. Wouldn't want it coming through your roof. And it's held on by bolts. This is a shot of investigators with it after it was found in the backyard in the Beaverton area. So why did it come off? Gregory Fife, a former NTSB investigator, says that is exactly the question the government will work to answer. But they're also going to be looking at the build back to Boeing from when this airplane was on the line, how it came out of the factory. There's also a vendor who actually makes the fuselage tube for Boeing called Spirit, and they're out of Wichita. So they're going to be looking at their build records. Is this a mechanical malfunction? Is this a materials defect? Is this a human uh, element to uh, done maintenance or improper installation. So there's a variety of things that are going on right now. The chair of the NTSB confirmed that the auto pressurization system warning on this very exact plane had gone off three previous times. Just so we're all on the same page as the inside of the jet it has pressurized air. You know that if you've been on an airplane. Above 10,000 feet, there's just not enough oxygen to breathe. So jet makers created a system to keep enough pressure inside the plane as if it was below 10,000 feet as it keeps going up. That way we can all sit there and easily breathe while it climbs to 35,000 feet. That Alaska jet was on its way up and at 16,000 feet when that plug door shot out. Now, if there's a problem with the pressure inside the cabin where we're all sitting, those warning sensors go off. That is what happened on earlier flights. The most recent was January 4th. It happened while the plane was back on the ground at the end of its flight. And that was the day before the door blew off. So were the sensors trying to tell the maintenance folks that the door bolts were loose? Should the plane have been grounded until they figured that out? I think that is a key issue. Um, you know, it's been described as, quote, a benign event. Well, nothing is benign when it comes to pressurization. And for them to have put a restriction on the airplane like that, but allow it to fly cross country, which this airplane had done the night before, um, makes no sense. And so there has to be some real uh, investigative work to find out what policy and procedure Alaska Airlines was using or employed to allow that to happen without fully determining what was causing this, this pressurization problem. If it's a one-off, it happens one time, that's one thing. But this was on multiple occasions, and they put a restriction on the airplane. That has to be answered. So you, as you heard, Alaska had restricted the specific jet to flying over land only and not from Portland to Hawaii, for example. What's the benefit of that? Well, might seem obvious, but the answer is more airports. If something like depressurization happens, you want to be able to land fast. That's not always possible when you're flying over the Pacific Ocean. This pressurization thing is something many of us passengers pretty much take for granted. And most of the time, everything happens just fine. It's perfect. But I think it's a fascinating physics discussion. So for that, we turn to Jim Hummel, who lives in the Portland area and is now retired after being an airline pilot for nearly 30 years. Well, there'd be the differential pressure, but the pressure in the cabin, versus the pressure outside. So, so let's say you're cruising along at 30,000 feet. The interior cabin pressure is probably going to be somewhere between seven and 8,000 feet because the cabin is pressurized. So if you lose a pressurization bulkhead, like a window or a door, then the pressure is going to equalize. And the more the greater the pressure differential, the more explosive the depressurization is going to be. So they were really lucky that they were at the altitude they were at. Also, I mean, because the oxygen levels in the in the atmosphere, uh, the higher you are, the less oxygen there is, and uh, there's a time of useful consciousness, which means, uh, say for example. Let's say, let's start at 35,000 feet. I just looked this up. Uh, 15 to 30 seconds is your time of useful consciousness. You'll lose consciousness within 30 seconds. 
at 35,000 feet. So at 30,000 feet, it's about a minute. And down there where they were, it's probably 10 to 15 minutes. So they were very, very lucky to be at such a low altitude. And also at a higher altitude, possible that uh, big parts of the plane could have been sucked out through that hole too. Back to the investigation. The former NTSB investigator says the team will learn a lot from looking at that recovered door plug. I think right now with the inspections taking place, this is an inspection that is just based on cursory information. The investigation as it goes forward, especially the further examination of the door that they've recovered, and of course the, the actual door frame itself, to determine whether or not this is still a good idea. Does this need to be re-engineered? Do they need to take this door plug out and actually put a fuselage plug in there? And then for those customers that do want that emergency exit, they formally put the exit in there. I mean, there's a lot that's going to be answered. There's also some issues with the cockpit voice recorder and the fact that it got overwritten. So there's a variety of different issues that are starting to develop that are outside of the actual cause. So that's the board's, that's the board's mission is to look at the primary cause and then any cursory issues that may have an adverse effect on passenger safety. And then finally, hats off to the crew for acting very smooth in a harrowing situation. The depressurization event was so violent, the chair of the NTSB now says, the door to the cockpit actually blew open, that it ripped off the headset of the co-pilot, and the captain lost part of her headset as well. The blast of wind also snatched away their checklist. It's a small miracle that nobody was hurt or killed. The NTSB has a news conference planned for 8 o'clock tonight. Look for the latest on KGW News at 11 and online at KGW.com.